Now let's look at some of the performance part and look at or, or look at some of the other important topics. Hadoop performance. So up till now we said only the map phase reduce phase, right? But in reality there are a lot of things which goes into a Hadoop job or a map reduce job. Up till now we simply said there will be a map to whatever we give and there will be a reducer. And this is what we said. Map phase and a reduce phase. But intermediately between these two phases there are a lot of things which happen. There will be sorting of data. There will be shuffling. Shuffling of data. There will be partitioning of data. There will might be a combiner phase. And there will be compression also. All those things will be there. So we will talk about these phases now. Try to understand how your performance will be impacted. So now let's understand. So we say the input split will be the block size. Let's say you have a file which is broken down into two blocks. Each block will be let's say 64 MB. Your mapper will work on each split. Mapper will read each block, one block. So let's say you have your file has 10 blocks. So you have 10 mappers. So it will read. So when I say read, so mapper also needs some memory to read that. So we call it buffer in memory. So there will be a memory, there will be a location in the memory, main memory of your system, which will be dedicated for this buffer. Then it will do a partition, sort and spill to disk, which will be given to the reducer side. Right? So what, what all these are, I will explain you in detail. You have some file. That file will be split into parts, which will be read by the mapper using RR means record readers. And they will be partitioned and shuffled. What is partition and shuffled? Right, so let's let's understand this. Let's say I have a file, text file, simple text file, in which I have written like this is file line one. Let's say. Then a lot of lines are written there. Then second line says this is a open open file let's say something it says so let's make an assumption this file is two blocks in size two SDFS blocks in size so let's say 64 MB is the block size so two blocks means 128 MB is the size correct so this file is very big. So it might happen, let's say, the very first line or file will be divided into half, two blocks, right? For one part will go into one block, other part will go into another block. So let's say the very first block had the first line and this is the first understanding, right? So it will not be exactly the same way but I'm trying to explain you the concept. Second line went into let's say first hundred lines went into block one, next hundred lines went to block two. So, right? So there are a lot of lines in between here, a lot of lines here. This is block one, this is block two. You are running a mapper here on some data node, let's say data node one. This is on another mapper you are running here, map job on data node two. So now you will see this keyword has happened in this block, also in this block. Similarly, is is also there. File is also there in both the blocks. So what happens when the file is split and a mapper runs on it, what it will do, first thing it will do, it will break it into key value pairs, right? It will break into key value pairs. So in this case, it will say, for example, this comma one, 
is comma 1 for example. Similarly here also mapper will say same thing. This comma 1 is comma 1. File comma 1, right? Some 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 things. This is a key value pair. So now you see this is also here and also here with both the mappers. So uh, we have to make sure that in a file this has happened two times. So if I feed this to a reducer independently and this also to a reducer independently, they will not know about each other's split. So it will think that this has happened only once but actually it happens twice in file but it went to other block. So what it will do, it will sort this according to a hash, according to a key. So each one having the same hash, let's say this will be hashed, this will also be hashed. All the same hashes will go to same reducer. For example, let's say I will say all the hashes starting with 1 to h go there or from i to z go somewhere else. So they will go to one reducer. Means this will always go to the same reducer whether it is coming from data node 1 or data node 2. Reducer, right? To the redu reducer. So that in the end it can say this has happened twice, not once. So this is the shuffle phase. Right? They are shuffling across data nodes and sorting it prior to doing that. Sorting and shuffling. So this is what this diagram is explaining. Mappers, they are partition means they are separating it key value pairwise. Then they are shuffling it and sorting it. And then given to reducer. So this is what it is explaining in the diagram. You can have n number of data nodes running map mappers. Same string can happen here, here, here. So a hash is computed of each key. And hash will always be unique, right? Let's say I have a hash on this, it will always be same. So hashes, all the keys with the same hash will always go to same producer. So it will be shuffled. Right? It will be shuffled. This diagram we have seen. So this is what it is trying to explain you. Let's go, let me go back to the slide. So let's say tomorrow to improve the performance, let's say my default block size, it does not matter whether it's Hadoop 2 or 1, let's say my default HDFS block size is 64 MB. Tomorrow I say let's make it 128 MB. I want to increase it. And you will say if I make it 128 MB it will improve my performance. Right? This might be a common saying. Or if let's say even if I if I put to 256, it will improve my performance, right? But performance is not just related to this. There are a lot of things which goes in the back end which you need to take care of. What are those things? As I said, each mapper will be working on a block. I have a mapper here. Will be reading a block. Mapper has a buffer. Which is a buffer kind of a cyclic buffer. Whose default size is 100 MB. So what does it mean if my block size is 64 MB? My mapper can read the entire block in its own memory inside the buffer and it can work. But if I increase this to 128 MB and I do not change this buffer size, what will happen? It will only read 100 MB. Then it will spill again to disk. Write in disk in some temp location. Read the next 28 MB 
then again write it to a disk. It will have spills, two spills. So I have to make sure whenever I increase the block size, I also increase the corresponding parameters. So this is defined by io.sort.mb parameter in mapper type and site file. So this is, I think it is explained few slides later after this. Yeah, it is here. So this is a circular buffer. So when you start reading it, it will keep on filling how much it can store the maximum size it has. So let's say 100 MB is the default size. If my block size is bigger than the buffer size, obviously my block cannot sit inside it. So it will do an intermediate split. It will write to some temp location on disk, then read the next part and again send it to a reducer, which will reduce your performance because it is doing extra IOs, disk IOs. Right? Extra disk IOs. So these are spills because your reducer mapper is not able to hold everything into the memory so it has to spill to disk it is spilling it then it has to also merge it because let's say red block has come here 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 what does it mean you uh, got the point out of 128 MB it read the first 100 MB and spilled to disk so in that 100 MB, I may have some strings which are also in the next 28 MB. In the next 28 MB. So they will again be partitioned according to the keys. So it will waste a lot of time. So another thing is always use a combiner. What is a combiner? Instead of sending each key to the reducer, do a sorting and a combiner on the primary side itself, on the mapper side, and then send it to a reducer. What does it mean? Let's say I'm running a mapper on a data node. It has to feed its output to a reducer. A reducer is running here. Let's say this is reducer. And I have two nodes on which I'm running mappers, maps. Let's say some key are happened here. Let's say some key came this comma one. This again, second line, it also came across this. So instead of sending this independently here, again this independently here, and letting reducer do a summation, I myself can do a summation here. I can say instead of saying this one one twice, I can say this comma two. So this is a combiner phase on the mapper side. So now the data which is transferred across the network is less. Also, I can also compress this data. By default compression is not enabled. I can compress data when moving across uh, different data nodes because my mapper and reducers most of the time will run on separate nodes. So the data which is going from one data node to another data node, it is good if I reduce it. So you have to enable compression also. So how you will enable compression, I will come back to this slide. By setting these two true in mapper-site file. So that the output also which goes from one data node to another data node is compressed. And this is the parameter I was explaining you, circular buffer. So here the example they have given, let's say you are running a very powerful system at home or in your production cluster. You say I have a 28 gig machine but still it is not giving me the performance. By default you can only run two mappers and two reducers irrespective of how much memory you have on a node because this is set in the parameter file, default config files. Number of mappers and reducer task is only two. So irrespective of the hardware you have. So how you tune it, you have to change these parameters accordingly, according to the memory you have or the CPU cores you have. For, for example, let's say I have a system which has four CPUs. Each CPU has two cores and support multi-threading.
What does it mean? I have a CPU. CPU can have multiple cores. Each core will also be hyper-threaded or multi-threaded. Right? In Intel it is two. We saw this in our class three, we saw this, right? Planning our cluster. We discussed this over there. Right? So if I say I have a CPU, I have a box with four CPUs, two cores, and each core is hyper-threaded. So I will have 16 threads. Means I can run 16 things in parallel on a node. So if I have this powerful CPU on a node, let's say one goes to running data node, other goes to running task tracker. So I am still left with 14. So I, how I can divide these 14? I can either divide them 7 wrappers, 7 reducers, or some other way. Maybe 10 mappers, 4 reducers in terms of CPU. So you have to take care of all these parameters. Different parameters have to be changed when you go to production because your systems will have much more memory, much more uh, powerful CPUs to work with. Okay, so this is how it is important. So we also discussed about another important parameter in terms of disk, having this from the same manufacturer. If you remember from class 3, what was the advantage of having this from the same manufacturer? Because it will give you better performance, same geometries, better performance. Right? So this is what it is talk talking about.